What's up guys, Eric here from TechSode TV, and today we're going to be doing an unboxing on Microsoft's brand new Surface Duo, as well as their Slim Surface Pen, and we're going to be comparing the Slim Pen to the S Pen on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra to see what the main differences are. As always, I will have time codes down in the description so you guys can jump around the video to find exactly what you're looking for. And if you appreciate video time codes, let me know by dropping a like down below. Let's go ahead and start with the Surface Duo. The box does come wrapped in plastic, but there is a little pull tab to make it easier to take off. So the first thing we have is the Surface Duo itself with a little pull tab to take that out. Let's go ahead and set this to the side, see what else they have in the box. Next, you've got the Surface Duo bumper. This is the little protective case that does come with it. I'll show you guys how to put this on in a minute. You've got documentation, as well as your SIM ejector tool. You've got your charging brick. I gotta say, this is incredibly well packaged. This is one of the best packed devices I think I've ever unboxed. Very, very impressed with Microsoft's packaging on this one. So here's the charging brick. This is kind of neat. It does have uh, fold away prongs, which is pretty nice. Makes it easier to travel with. USB-C, that's much appreciated. As you can see, it's an 18 watt charger. And unfortunately, that's the fastest you can charge the Surface Duo. But it is nice that Microsoft did include the fastest charger in the box, which is something that a lot of smartphone manufacturers don't do. And last but not least, we get our USB-C charging cable. Again, very well packaged. I'd also like to quickly point out that this cable is way longer than any typical cable that you get in the box with a smartphone, which I'm actually really impressed by. Sometimes I'd like to just have a longer cable to reach when I'm plugging in a phone, especially if I'm plugging it on a nightstand. And this cable is plenty long enough. I mean, this looks like it's about double the size of any other standard cable you'd get in the box with any other smartphone. All right, so I did just measure it out, and this cable does measure to be almost six feet long, which is considerably longer than the about three and a half foot cable, maybe like 3.3 feet that you get with something like a Galaxy Note 20. Now let's go ahead and pull the wrapper off the Duo itself. All right, so the first thing I gotta say is, Holy smokes, does this thing feel premium. That is super cool. The hinge feels incredible on this. You can literally stop it anywhere. There's no loose parts to the hinge. Like the hardware on this is, oh my goodness. And even closing on the back, it's got that like super just smooth. It literally physically feels like you're closing two pieces of fabric together onto each other. It's just really impressive. I can't believe how impressive uh, a hinge is, but that's that's really impressive. I'm, I'm blown away by just how this device feels. This certainly does feel like a $1,300 or $1,400 device. And look how thin this is. I mean, people talk about how thin it is, but until you see this in person, I mean, it's just nuts. So for a quick size comparison, here's the Note 20 Ultra, and it's barely thicker than the Note 20 Ultra. It's just crazy how thin they were able to make this device. And especially when you have it open like this and you look at the thickness, I mean, now it's way thinner than the Note 20 Ultra. That's incredibly impressive. Let's go ahead and turn it on. You've got your power button right here on the side. So let's go ahead and press that and we'll get this to turn on. Huh, so pressing the power button doesn't seem to be doing anything. That's a little concerning. <laughs> First impression, awesome. Second impression, maybe this battery's dead. So let me plug this in and we'll see if I can get this to turn on. Yeah, it's been plugged in for a little bit and I'm still not getting any, any functionality out of that power button. All right, well, I'm gonna let this charge for a little bit and hopefully it starts working sometime later. All right, so after about three hours of charging and holding the power button for literally about three minutes, it finally turned on. I'm hoping that's just because the battery was completely dead when I got it and needed a long time to charge, but I'll let you guys know if that ends up happening again. I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up now and start downloading any updates. And while that's running in the background, we'll unbox the Slim Pen. All right, so here's the Slim Pen and Charger. Let's go ahead and take this out of the box. Just pull from the top. 
Looks like you've got some documentation here. A getting started guide for how to charge it up. And here's the pen itself. Pretty cool with this little charging dock. Oh, that snaps in really nice. That's, wow, you can't mess that up. That, <laughs> this is some good magnets, that's awesome. Under here, you get your charging cable, and that's it. And here's a quick comparison to the original Surface Pen. So the Slim is definitely a little bit shorter and a lot more narrow. The original one is kind of rounded with one side that's flat, and the Slim Pen is just a super narrow version of it. The pen tips are also notably different. The original Surface Pen seems to have a finer point for the tip compared to the Slim Pen. Both of them do have click buttons on the back. You can hear them clicking. And both also have a button on the side. So let's go ahead and set this to the side and grab the Surface Duo again. So the first update installed and it looks like it's taking me right back to the beginning of the setup screen again. So we'll go ahead and continue and we'll start again. Looks like they do give you an option to bring data from a previous Android phone. Let's go ahead and do that. And using this method, you can restore all of your apps, contacts, messages, device settings, which includes Wi-Fi passwords, call history, and all of your Google things are synced automatically. Also, if you tap on apps, you can actually select which specific apps you want to transfer. However, it looks like you can't transfer any photos or videos. When you're done selecting everything you want to transfer, just tap restore. And now you can just continue setting up your device while that runs in the background. So here's a notable change. Typically on Android devices, you're able to do like a swipe pattern to unlock, but this only gives you the option of a pin or a password. You don't actually get a swipe option. So it looks like my Surface Duo is all set up now. And if I pull down this little notification shade, you can see that it's now installing the applications from my Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Oh, wow. So first impressions, the transition from one screen to another is really smooth. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. So I just noticed that if you swipe to the left of the home screen, you get something called Glance, and this gives you a bunch of information at a glance, hence the name. So right now I've got my calendar, I've got tasks, sticky notes, frequently used applications, recent activities I've done. At the bottom, I can tap edit this view, and I can even add, uh, let's see, a family thing, documents, Microsoft rewards, Oh, looks like you can even add widgets. Let me go ahead and tap that. Oh, awesome. It looks like this includes all of the widgets I have on my phone. So if I scroll down and maybe select this calendar widget here. Yeah, great. It just drops it right there. That is so cool. So if you're someone who doesn't want a bunch of widgets on your home screen, it looks like you can just have them all on a little sidebar that's quick to access. Jumping back into this menu, you can hold these little bars and reorder them however you'd like. And if I start scrolling back up, you'll see that I also get a news option. So if I tap that, it just gives me a bunch of news. Now, I don't know exactly how it picks what to show for news. I think this is just kind of a default thing. Looks like there's a lot of sports, maybe some political stuff. But this just, wow, this just keeps like, whoa, that's a lot. And look how fast that loaded. That's impressive how much news. It, okay, I finally hit the end right there. That's impressive how much news it was able to just have loaded that fast. And whenever you stop, it's just, the, boom, the pictures are instantly there. That's really impressive. So scrolling back up definitely takes a while. I kind of wish that they had a, a bar on the side to get back up faster. When you eventually do get to the top and tap this settings gear, you can actually tap news here and you can change your news interests. So if I tap this, let's say I'm not interested in lifestyle news or travel news, then I can just uncheck those and I won't get news about those things. If I go back and do news market, I can actually select which country to get news from. And that's actually a really cool feature. Here's something important I just noticed. If I put my hand on this side of the screen, it is super hot. And this side is like stone cold. So clearly the processor is on this side and it's working really hard to get all those applications installed right now. So we'll see over time if the right side stays hot during everyday use or if it's just because it's installing a bunch of applications. In terms of navigation, it's pretty simple. If you swipe down on any page, then you'll get this frequently used applications bar that pops up and you can search for any applications on your device. And something else I noticed right away is that the keyboard is actually brought to the right side a little bit. So it's easier to swipe around on with one hand, which I really appreciate. And if you swipe down on the other side, it actually just moves that finder to the other side. Swiping up on either side brings up all of your applications that you can scroll through and you can actually search by putting your finger over on the letters and dragging up and down. And you can search by title. 
If you're in an application and want to switch it to the other side, it's actually pretty simple. You just swipe up from the bottom and now you can kind of just move it around freely and you just swipe it over to the other side. Now, when I first saw people doing this on demos a while ago, I thought to myself, how is this gonna feel swiping from one screen to the other and just kind of crossing this gap in the middle? And it's actually pretty smooth. Like you can feel the gap in the middle, obviously, um, but the screens are smooth enough, the gap is smooth enough that it's simple enough to do this without your finger getting caught. So I already found my first bug and I thought that you could just simply move this over and let go and have it open up, but clearly that doesn't work. And once you do that, this bottom recent apps thing stops working for a few seconds. Like that's that's the app drawer, but if I wanted to open up the bottom, there we go. So now it's finally working again to get into your recent application. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Clearly it's a bug, but I did find that if you move quickly, you can actually move the application to the other screen. So let me demonstrate that. So if you do a quick move, which is what you'd actually be doing in real world usage, you're not just gonna lift this and wait a little bit and kind of move it back and forth. You're not gonna you're not gonna be doing that in real life. So it's not too big of an issue for now, and that's something that can definitely be fixed in a future update. To close an application, you just tap this line on the bottom and the application will close right back down. If you wanna span an app across both screens, you just swipe up, bring it to the middle until it spans both screens and let go, and it'll open up on both screens. Now, I don't have any photos that I recently took here, but if I start taking a couple, you'll see that those are gonna start populating over there on the left. Now, that's something else I just noticed, you can't take photos very quickly. That's definitely much slower than pretty much any other smartphone camera I've used. A couple important things to note about the Surface Duo is that it doesn't support wireless charging. So as you can see, I've got a wireless charger here, it's plugged in. Even if I drop this down, with one side on each charging pad, I'm not gonna get anything. And at first I thought that was because the back of this is gonna be made out of magnesium, but it's not. It's a glass back and a glass front. So it's capable of wireless charging, but for some reason, Microsoft decided to leave that out. The other important thing is that there is no camera on the outside of the device, nor are there any notification LEDs. So if you wanna check notifications, you will need to open the device all the way up to get all your notifications. And as you can see, the camera is up here on the upper right corner. And this is the only camera on the device. So if I go ahead and open up my camera here, I can go ahead and snap a photo. And if you wanna use it as a rear camera, you just have to flip it around. And now you'll get a viewfinder on this side and it'll be used as a rear camera. And to be honest, the camera's really not that great. This is not the device that you buy for great pictures. This is the device you buy because it has two screens and you're really interested in productivity. The Surface Duo also doesn't have any sort of water or dust resistance rating. And that's because there's a lot of moving parts here. And it's much harder to get a water resistance or dust rating when you have so many moving parts and lots of places for that water and dust to get into. So if you're an avid beachgoer or you do tend to spill things on your phones every once in a while, then this probably isn't the phone for you. Finding a car mount for this is going to be difficult because it is so wide. Just for a quick comparison, here is a Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, and you can see it's considerably wider than that. If you're not going to be putting a case on your Surface Duo, then my favorite car mount does work. This is the IATI OnePlus 5. I just did an accessories video for the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra where I talk about this if you wanna learn more about it, but it does just barely fit. So that locks into place right there, and that will hold tight enough. That's not gonna drop out on you. And obviously you can also fold the Surface Duo the other way so you can actually see the screen when it's in the mount. If you're gonna put a case on your Surface Duo, then the IATI One Touch 5 will not work. But I did find a car mount on Amazon that had really good reviews and a significantly wider grip that will work with the Surface Duo with a case on. I'll have an Amazon link to the IATI One Touch 5 as well as the other car mount down in the description if you're interested. So I'm not gonna dive too deep into all of the features you get with the Surface Duo. I actually have a separate video planned for that. But for now, I do wanna take a look at the Slim Pen and see how well that works with this. So let's go ahead and pair it now. So first I need to go to my Bluetooth settings by swiping down from the top and long pressing the Bluetooth toggle. Then I'm gonna tap pair new device and I'm gonna hold this button down until it starts flashing white. There we go, it's flashing white now. Surface Pen just popped up, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And now I can start writing with the Slim Pen. All right, so let's see how the Slim Pen compares to the S Pen. 
So I'm going to go ahead and start writing with the slim pen here. And one of the very first things I notice is that this doesn't feel quite as natural as the S Pen does. And the biggest part of that is the resistance that I feel with the S Pen. It's, it's almost like you get some resistance between whatever this tip is made out of and this glass here. It, it's almost like it's, it's more rubbery, I guess. And it makes it feel more natural, like you're writing on something other than glass. Whereas with this Slim Pen, it definitely feels like I'm writing on glass. The other thing I notice is that there's definitely some input lag on the Slim Pen. As you can probably see when I'm drawing those lines, let me clear some of them out here. Uh, as you can see when I'm drawing these lines, the lines kind of lag behind where the pen actually is. But on the S Pen, that's not so much the case. There's very, very little lag here and I can draw super fast lines and the ink actually keeps up with where the pen is. Now for most people, that's probably not gonna be too annoying, but it's definitely noticeable. It's not something you have to look for. You just see it whenever you're writing anything. When you're writing words or drawing anything, you will notice that it does lag a little bit. Both of these do offer palm rejection, so I can just rest my hand right on the screen and start writing, and I won't have any extra things being written on the side here. And here it is with the Note 20 Ultra. You can see that I can draw just fine with my hand on the screen. Another thing they both have in common is pressure sensitivity. So if I draw really lightly here, you can see that it's a pretty thin line. And if I give a little bit more force to it, you can see that the lines get a little more thick. And then here it is again with a light pressure line. Same deal for the S Pen. If I draw a very light line, I get these very, very faint lines. And the harder I press, the thicker the line gets. One more thing I forgot to point out is that both of them do have a hover feature. So if you hover over something, you are going to get more information about it. And just in case you weren't sure, the Surface Pen does work on both screens. In terms of comfort in the hand, both of them are really good, but I feel like if I'm gonna be drawing for an extended period of time or writing for an extended period of time, I may wanna go with the Slim Pen just because it is a little bit bigger. However, since the S Pen is noticeably more natural feeling and has less input lag, I feel like I'd still gravitate to using the S Pen for longer writing or drawing sessions just because of how it feels when you write. In terms of erasing, both of them have multiple ways to erase. The first is to select the eraser tool and start erasing like that. The second is to just hold the side button and start drawing with that and that'll start erasing. When you let go of the side button, you'll go back to regular drawing. However, the Slim Pen has the added feature of also being able to erase with the back side of the pen. And when you're using the back side of the pen, it does feel a lot more natural because this is more of a rubberized type grip, so you do get more friction. If you want to erase with the S Pen, you still have the option to switch to an eraser tool and erase with that, or hold the S Pen button down and erase that way. And then when you release the S Pen button, you can go right back to drawing. And since the S Pen only has this little clicking part on the back to help eject it out of the phone when you want to take it out, you don't have the ability to erase with the backside of this one. In terms of pen features, the Slim Pen is basically just like a glorified stylus. There's really nothing special that you can do natively on the Surface Duo, or at least not now. Maybe Microsoft will add some things in the future, but currently it's literally just for writing and erasing. And I dug through the settings for a bit and I couldn't find anything that would allow you to program either one of the buttons on the Slim Pen to do anything on the Surface Duo. The only setting I did find for the Slim Pen was to choose whether you are right or left-handed. The one notable benefit to the Surface Duo is the fact that the screen is noticeably wider, so that is gonna make it a bit easier to write handwritten notes on the Surface Duo than on any note device. The S Pen, on the other hand, is packed with features. Everything from the Air Command menu that has a ton of S Pen specific features, to the Air Actions that allow you to do things like hold the S Pen button down to open up the camera app, then tap the S button to take pictures, hold and swipe with the S Pen to switch between camera modes. You can even do a circle motion to zoom in and out with the camera and then let go to stop whenever you're done zooming, and so much more. So at the end of the day, it's a no brainer. The S Pen is a much better tool if you're gonna be writing on your smartphone a lot. All that said, I wanna be clear that I'm not saying that the Slim Pen is a bad pen, I'm just saying that the S Pen offers more features and a better writing experience. However, if you did get a Surface Duo, then the Slim Pen is gonna be an excellent purchase to go along with it, and it's definitely gonna work a lot better than any other capacitive stylus you could buy. And in case you're wondering, the pens do work with different technologies, so you won't be able to use the S Pen on the Surface Duo, and you won't be able to use the Surface Slim Pen on the Note 20 Ultra. These will only work on their respective devices.
I'm sure at least some of you are wondering if the Surface Dial works with the Surface Duo because this does work with every other Surface product. And the answer is unfortunately no. As you can see, I do have it paired and turning the dial, pressing the button on the dial, nothing works at all. Even if I open up OneNote, and I have my different pen tools here and I start writing. It doesn't undo or redo or change pen tips. It doesn't do anything at all. And I also tried putting the Surface Dial on the screen to see if you'd get the circular pop-up that shows up on other Surface devices, but that also didn't work. Now, to be honest, I'm not too sure how useful this would be anyway if they did add support for it, but in case you were wondering, it does not currently have Surface Dial support. One more thing I need to point out is that while technically you can attach the slim pen to the front cover and it will stay on pretty good, it will only stay on good with the front cover. If I try to put this on the back, then you'll see that it just kind of slides off and whoops, there it goes. So as you can see, it just doesn't work that well. And that's not by design either. Like there's magnets here to hold this together when you close it and they weren't meant to hold this pen. Now let's go ahead and put the case on. One of the first things I want to point out, something I noticed right away, is that there's these little pull tabs here. And if you pull this off, you'll see that there is an adhesive here. So this is not one of those cases that you can just continually take on and off your phone. You're going to want to put this on and then leave it on. So I'll go ahead and pull this off. And we will just kind of wrap it around on this side here. That's actually really easy to install. Awesome. Now I'll just do the other side and we'll be done. So I'll pull this out. And I will just drop the device onto there and push it on to make sure there's no gaps anywhere. And then on the top, there are these two little stickers to pull off. This just tells you what side is the top and what side is the bottom, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You don't really need these to tell you that. And there you go. Here is the Surface Duo with the case on it. The case does seem fairly protective. I mean, the bumper is pretty thick and it's definitely really grippy. I feel like it's gonna be a lot harder to drop the device when you have this case on because of how grippy it is. It's actually so grippy that when I tried to put it in my pants pocket, it was almost hard to take it back out because of how grippy it was inside the pocket. Something very important to notice though is that there's no protection on the side here like at all, like there's no nubs or anything. So if you drop your phone on this side, that's just gonna hit the ground. And these are made out of metal, which is great. So since this isn't glass, you're less likely to cause some serious damage to it. But just know that this side won't be protected. And in case you're wondering how you get to the SIM card, that's actually available on this little slot right here. There's a little groove for you to get your fingernail into or something. And you pull that back and there is your SIM tray. And in case you're wondering what this giant piece is on this side, and you notice that it's not on the front, the purpose of this is so that the hinge still works properly. So if I open this all the way up and you look at the top here, you'll see that the bumper on each side is touching at this end. And so if this piece didn't stick out as far, like if this only went to here and followed the rest of the bumper line, then what would end up happening is when you try to close it, you'd either have a gap here or you'd be putting so much pressure on this side that you'd actually be pushing the bumper off. So this is just a not so elegant way to fix that issue. If you guys found this video helpful, let me know by dropping a like down below. I'm going to start digging deep into all of the features on the Surface Duo so I can come back with a much deeper dive into everything that the Surface Duo is capable of. If you don't want to miss that or my Galaxy Fold 2 and Tab S7 Plus coverage, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.